So adding a trend line is really simple. Um, so to do that, so first of all, n notice that um, add chart elements has appeared, and I can't find the design option here, right? So to get the to get the design option back, click on your graph anywhere on the graph, and the design option comes back. Then click on design, and then add chart element will appear again, right? So to add trend line, click on add chart elements and look for trend line. So if you look at all these options, none of these are really good for what you're doing because you're, well, you're not really drawing a linear graph right now and you're not doing any of the other things. So the best thing to do is just go on more trend line options and click on power. Don't choose anything else, choose power, okay? Because just, yeah, you choose power, okay? <laughs> so, um, notice how this line is, the trend line is dotted. I don't really like the way that looks, so I'm just gonna change that. So to change the way it looks, um, you don't have to do this, but it's something I like to do. So over here, you got this three bar looking thingy over here, right? That's where you are right now. If you click on this bucket with a paint thing in it, right? And you go down to compound type. If you just change it, wait, what? Oh, sorry, dash type. Change it to like this hard line up here. Then the whole, then the line will change to something that looks a bit nicer. Then you can change the color and whatever you want depending on how much time you have. I just like my trend lines to be black because it looks a bit nicer on paper. But do whatever you want, All right? And that, and then you can go back to your um, the three bars looking thing, right? Scroll down and click on display equation on chart, and that'll give you your equation for your trend line, All right? Now, um. Basically, you just um, want to make the equation bigger because, well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty blind. So click on home and then increase the font size. I'm just going to do 20, right? Now notice how we have y and x in our equation. y and x are not our variables, right? Because that's not what we're measuring. We're not measuring, measuring, measuring y or x. We're measuring period and length. So we change it for the variables we, we are investigating. So our y variable in this case is period, and the symbol we chose for it is t, so we change it to t. And the x in here is actually meant to be length, which is what we chose. So we change it to capital L, like we chose before. Now, you should be able to tell that this graph I've got is a square root relationship, right? And if it's a square root relationship, then in order to transform it into a linear graph, we would have to do what? We would have to square root our independent variable, right? So, yeah, we square root our independent variable. Um, I will not have, I will not cover um, how to do the lineation in this video. I'll cover them in the next one, or the one after that. But what I do want to go over is basically, this is all you need um, for the curve graph. Um, yeah, to be honest, all you need to get out of it. Um, you don't have to put the uncertainties on here, that's for the linear graph. Just make sure you label the graph, so length versus period, or you could be a bit longer and say the relationship between length and period or whatever, right? Make sure you label the axes, make sure you have a nice trend line and you have the trend line equation, right? Because the equation is really important. And make sure to change the variables in the equation for the actual variables you're working with. And if I were to just go through my data, I think that's all you need to do for the curve graph. Yes, it is. So, now that that's done, in the next video we'll cover how to deal with linearizing this graph. Graph. Okay?